Welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today we're going to be going into the last episode of the Dofer A111-1 VCO2 high-end VCO uh, series. Uh, if you're with us in some of the previous demonstrations, we've gone through quite a bit of information. We've talked about linear FM, we've talked about exponential FM, given some audio demonstrations of both of those. Um, and then, of course, in the first video, which covered the basics, kind of an overview of all the features of the VCO, uh, we did a basic demonstration of some of the waveforms that are found in this VCO. Um, in this video, what I thought we would do is kind of focus on pulse width modulation, which up until now we haven't really uh, gone into. Um, but for that to happen, we're probably going to want to see what this looks like too. Uh, this is going to be specifically related to our friend, the pulse or rectangle wave right here. And uh, let's get a look at it first, uh, just a basic kind of droney type sound, and then we'll work our way out from there. So let me pass this in so you can see it. So patching out up here. And if you look up at our scope, there it is right there, just an approximation. Now, if we wanted to shape this, we could manually, of course, adjust the pulse width by going in here and turning this, and just keep your eye on the scope over there. And I'm just turning it clockwise. There it is with the scope. It's getting thinner and thinner right there. You can also hear the sound changing quite a bit. And then there it is all the way at the max right there. Now if I bring it all the way in the opposite direction, you can kind of hear the sound changing. You should be able to see it on the scope as well. Now it's getting thinner and thinner again. Until it kind of just goes off to zero. But you can also modulate this. Now you don't have to stand there manually turning this. You can also do pulse width modulation, which sounds pretty cool with external VCOs, envelopes, any of that sort of stuff. So I thought we'd do a couple of demonstrations of that uh, with and without notes patching in there. So let's get a few notes patching in there so we can kind of hear that with some notes. Uh, if you remember back in a few of the other videos, uh, we have this sequencer kind of set up over here on the left and uh, the notes from this A155 are going into the quantizer over here. And then I'm just going to take the notes out from here and then go over to my A111, patch into the CV right there. And actually bring down our VCO an octave. And let's just hear what the manual pulse width modulation would sound like. So here we go. Now let's get a few uh, CV sources involved. So if we look down to the bottom section, I have an LFO over here. Well, actually, I have two LFOs. So let's just try a basic uh, triangle wave. Switch it into low frequency mode right there. And then patch it up into the pulse width modulation input over here. Let me bring it all the way down first. And then I'll just slowly bring in this triangle wave. Go a little bit. And now you can kind of hear it just changing over time based on the frequency of our LFO over here. And that's with a triangle wave. Let's just bring it up a little more to the max there. You can take a look over at our scope to see kind of visually what's happening. You can see it kind of shifting. Now let's try a different waveform. So taking out the triangle wave, and let's go to a sine wave. So a little bit faster. Just bring it down the rate. Let me 
should be able to see the difference there and hear the difference as well. But there are a lot of ways that you can actually uh, modulate the pulse width. You know, I do have this uh, where I'm using an LFO, and I use an LFO here, but we can also use our friend the A149 as well. So let's patch this pulse into the clock in over here. Just kind of get that moving a little bit. And you should some, see some activity over here. And we're just going to take these random voltages from here and patch them into our pulse width modulation input and hear what that sounds like. See if we get some favorable results over here. Bring down the rate a little. So slightly different timbre we got going on there. And those voltages might be going a little bit too high and a little bit too low, so what I can do is maybe adjust this down a little bit to kind of get them under control so they don't keep jumping out into the outer regions of our pulse width to where it's not audible. Okay, or I could try a different flavor of random voltages. Let's try the bottom section, see if we get any different results. Increase the clock over here. We have time for one more type of modulation source. So I'm going to go over to my sequencer and uh, get this clock out. And let's see. So let me unpatch some of these cables. I might use these. Let's actually do this. Patch out from the clock out. I'm going to patch into the clock divider right here. And we'll just take a division of that. So we'll take the, maybe the fourth division. And then I'll patch it into the envelope in this lower section, which looks like you may not be able to see. So I'm going to move my camera over a little so you can hopefully see this. There we go. Light tune. There we go. So now you can see the envelope is being triggered. I'm take the output from there. Go into our pulse module, pulse with modulation input right there. I'm sorry about the angle here. We just had extra time, so I wanted to get one more demo in there. Now I could also maybe. Change the division over here, maybe go to an eighth. Change the length of the envelope. Or make it a really long envelope, maybe go down to a you know, 30 second. See what that sounds like. Now the change over at our scope should be occurring over a longer period of time. But that's one of the fun things about modular is that you have a lot of options and a lot of different variations. I mean, you could even go in and, you know, mix and match several CVs together, several of your LFOs together, get your own wave shapes, uh, or you know, if you had a second input like you do on the A110, you could actually mix in two 
separate types of CV, CV signals to get your pulse width modulation, depending on how much you're into that sound. Um, but at any rate, I just wanted to keep this sort of a simple demonstration of pulse width modulation and let you get a chance to hear what it sounds like in action. Um, that's going to actually do it for the whole A111 series. Uh, we've covered quite a bit of ground. As I said before, you know, we did linear FM, um, exponential FM. We uh, talked about synchronization, hard and soft sync. Uh, and then, we, of course, we had the first video that was over just the basics and overview. Uh, hopefully you found this series useful. I do invite you to go back and look at some of those other videos if you missed some of those. Um, and also any of the other videos that I have on my Riles World of Sense channel. Um, also, if, in case you're unaware, uh, I do have another YouTube channel out there called Modular Wild. So I do invite you to check out some of those videos on, let's see, www.youtube.com slash Modular Wild. Uh, so check those out. More Eurorack synthesizer type sounds, filters, envelopes, sequencers, and so forth. Uh, so check them out. And uh, I'm not sure what we have planned for the next series, but I got one or two things in my head. Um, but I do invite you to come back. And I uh, hope you got some use out of this. Please leave any of your comments or uh, questions on the YouTube channel or on this video page if you feel like it. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time. And keep on patching.